Hello, friends and fellow artists. This is Art and Wine. My name's Jamie Bird. Today, I want to talk about something that's a little difficult for a lot of people to talk about, and it's about selling your art. And I like to rephrase that expression to helping customers purchase your art, uh, because that's pretty much what it is. And so um, that's what we're going to talk about today. If you like art and wine and talking about other creative stuff, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. So one of the things that I think is kind of difficult for a lot of people is they don't want to sell their art. Yes, they want to sell their art, but they don't want that hard sell, which is absolutely not something to do when you are wanting people to purchase your artwork. And I think that it's super important to define, first of all, some of these definitions. When I first went into one of the galleries, I was told by one of the, the managers there that they don't sell art. I knew what they meant, <laughs> but Words are super powerful, and I think when you say stuff like, we don't sell stuff, I mean, you're kind of saying you're not selling stuff. I am one of those people that just really believe in the importance of words and putting things out into the universe. And if you're, if you're worried about doing hard sales and pushing people, I completely get that, and I don't think that that's an appropriate thing for, for artwork. However, I think it's important to also say that you do sell artwork. <laughs> that is the whole point. That's the point of a gallery. That's the point of a co-op. If you're creating artwork uh, for purchase, you want to sell it. I think that there's this really confusion with the wording and people don't like to say sell because it implies that you're doing a hard sale. I so don't believe in hard sales at all, but I do believe in selling artwork. I would like to start rephrasing this and helping people with this. We're helping customers or clients or collectors to purchase artwork. That's pretty much what we're trying to do. And maybe that's an easier way of putting it. I think one of the first most important things I'd like to emphasize is that when we're dealing with selling or helping a customer purchase our artwork or someone else's artwork, that you still want to be yourself. You want to be genuine. You want to be truthful. You want to be absolutely honest. And you want to have fun and be yourself. So this is, has nothing to do with faking anything. And I think that's really important because again, sales and sales tactics and, and this kind of thing for decades have really become a, a, a dirty word for a lot of people and it also just feels if it, it doesn't feel good when we're when we're referring to those kind of tactics part of a thing in a cooperative or an art co-op is you're often there helping to have people purchase other people's art as well so i believe that being able to know how to talk to other people about other artists' work is super important. So the first thing that I am trying to do, even though I'm doing it kind of slowly, is to get to know all the other artists in my cooperative and learn how to explain their process or explain their artwork and know something about it so that I can genuinely talk to an interested customer in their work. I think it's really good that if you are in a co-op and, and the other artists have not done a bio or an artist statement, I think that could be truly helpful for all the other artists, not just for the customers, but for the other artists that are working their shifts. It, it, it gives us insight. And I feel like if you aren't going to do it for your customer, maybe do it for all the other artists that are in the co-op or cooperative with you. It is important to not just be selling your own artwork when you are working your shift. I think that first of all, when you are in a cooperative, it's usually so eclectic that there's not a lot of people that like everything. They're usually drawn to one or two particular artists. So it's really important to make sure that you 
know which artists they're being pulled towards and help them purchase that artwork. The more that we help each other out, the more you will sell your artwork as well. It's important that we all work together. And I think, you know, I would, of course, I want everybody else in the co-op to know how to sell my stuff. Uh, but I also feel very much that it's important for me to know how to, to sell their things and to make sure that I'm helping those customers purchase their artwork. Purchasing artwork is very emotional. It's an emotionally based thing, uh, like a lot of big purchases, I'm sure for many people. We're trying to create a connection. We're trying to connect with our potential buyer. And we do that through all sorts of different ways. Um, again, number one, be genuine and be yourself. But number two, it's also about helping people connect and put the dots together with the art. Because really, the artwork is just a bridge between the, the, the buyer and the creator. And the buyer wants to be connected to the artist in some way. That's another thing that I like to, to emphasize is storytelling is really a very good tool to have. And those stories can be anything you want. Again, they should be truthful. <laughs> and they should provoke something about your work or the other artist's work that you're helping sell, or maybe it just has to do with how you felt that day, and it might bring some kind of connection with you and the buyer. I've been doing art shows for a really long time. I know I've mentioned that before, over 20 years, but I definitely feel like I have a lot of experience with with being able to read customers, not stereotyping them either. That's this, this is very you know interesting. I had heard that there's a gallery uh, in Los Angeles, and I'm sure there's a lot of galleries that run like this, but where they literally, based on the car you drive up in and based on the clothes that you're wearing, they will hand you a different price list. <laughs> so I don't know, I just don't find that very cool. But what you can do is you can recognize when people, where their interest is when they're looking around. Usually what I like to do is when people come in to the gallery or when I was doing a art booth, I would welcome them. I would just say, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you need any help. And that was usually just enough to, to let them know that I'm there, but I'm not there to stand and start questioning them about you know what they want to buy. It's important to give that space to the potential buyer and let them know that you're just there to help and then be able to read cues and definitely be able to see when they need some help or when they are offering nonverbal cues. I will sometimes walk nearby and just try to do some busy work so that I'm a little closer to them. And, and because 90% of the time when I do that, they will turn to me and ask me a question. But if I'm over across the room, they really won't do that. But I also don't wanna be over them, standing over them, acting as though I'm waiting on them. That's another really bad tactic. Uh, it's very common in other places, in other countries, I've noticed, and it's because people want to feel like I'm at your service. But here in the States, it just doesn't fly very well. Nobody wants somebody hovering over them. I will usually carry around uh, some glass cleaner. I have uh, a tiny little spray bottle of it and some paper towels, and sometimes I'm just wiping down jewelry or, or, or cleaning a frame. And so what that does is it, it makes the customer feel as though you're, you're available, but you're not hovering. It's just something that I do, and it seems to really help with the connection with a potential buyer. Another thing that I think is really important is be a problem solver. I think when people start talking to you about artwork or, or shipping, uh, reframing, things like that. Try your best to prob to solve the problem for them that they're having because they're obviously expressing maybe some questionable 
things about purchasing the art. And I think it's good to make sure that you do your best honestly to try to solve their problems and not give them more problems. If you don't know, then say, yeah, let's look that up. Or if it's another artist that's not there, let's call that artist up. Let's see if we can get him on the phone. So I think the bottom line is to be really honest, be genuine, be polite the best way that you can and, and let people have space to, to enjoy their experience, but also know when it's time to, to approach them and to help them with anything. The, the strong sales tactics don't allow people to, to make a decision. It doesn't, make, it, it doesn't allow people to have time to process. It's good to just kind of let them know, hey, I'm here, let me know if I can help you. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to do my best to answer them. Sometimes customers are just looking for confirmation of things that they're already thinking about and they might be a little concerned with. So I think that's helpful, but not be pushy about that, of course. This, this is a tough one for me, but one of the other things that I think is kind of important is not to be looking bored. <laughs> Even if you're in a uh, cooperative or you are in a in an art, you know, an art show at a booth, sitting down and reading a book and just not being engaged at all is one of the worst things you can do. And sure, you can do it, and and plenty of people do, but it's for me, it's never worked. And when I'm up and moving around and doing things and even doing demos, sitting and making jewelry or painting, people are so much more engaged with that. And you want to make sure that you're still engaging with people, but not overwhelming them and not ignoring them. Please leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. If you have some other suggestions or some other great tactics, please let us know. There is this great video right over there I think. Click on that video for more cool art and wine videos. And if you like all this stuff, please subscribe and hit the notification bell because then you'll know every time I put out a new video, which is pretty much every Thursday these days. And I appreciate you so much. I love being here. And remember, I don't know where my wine is, but keep creating. <laughs>